Welcome back. Today we are going to pack for my river rafting trip down the Grand Canyon. We are so excited about this trip. We've been anticipating it for years. It's gonna be a multi-generational trip, us and our kids, and then my mother and one of her brothers and one of her sisters, we're all gonna to go together. It's gonna to be so much fun. We are only going on a three-day trip this time. It's gonna be two overnights and three full days. I'm going to have lots of blog posts on NPS Family Travel about this specific trip, so be sure that you flip on over there. I'll have it linked down below, and you can get all the details about the trip itself. But today we're gonna to do packing, and spoiler alert, I hate packing. Packing sends me into decision fatigue, but today I've got to tackle it. There are a lot of odds and ends that I don't normally pack for trips that I don't normally deal with that are on the list to pack today. But the good thing is the river rafting outfitter that we are using, which is Western River Expeditions, actually provides us with a really comprehensive list of exactly what we need. So I'm thinking if I can just follow directions, it's not gonna be as much of a headache as I thought it might be. Let's get started. So Western River Expeditions actually sent me a three page packing list. They send that to everybody. They change the list based on which of the expeditions you're actually gonna join them on. Ours is only three days, so they sent us the list for the three days. So even the number of pairs of underwear that I need are correct and on target and I can just rely on this and go. So the first thing that they actually talk about is a lot of the clothing. And the problem with clothing and packing ahead of time for me is that I have things that are still being used and worn and running through the washer and the dryer. So those I may wait until the last minute, maybe Saturday before I actually toss those in the bag. So I will be making notes on my packing list about what I still need to add. But those I am less likely to forget than some of the other odds and ends in this packing list. One of the first things that they talk about are quick dry shirts. Okay, so they want you to have like sun shirts, but not just shirts to protect yourself from the sun, but shirts that will quickly dry when you get wet because if you wear something like cotton like this, then that's going to retain the moisture and that can make you cold because the water in the river is actually very cold even though we're going at the end of May, turn of June, so the highs should actually be in the 90s. But we need things that quickly dry out so we can be comfortable on the many hours of rafting. I actually bought three of these shirts. I bought one first. I finally learned the hard way. Buy one and see if you like it before you buy the others. But I got these at Amazon. I don't know. They were maybe like 20 bucks each or something. And so I like that they go up a little bit on the sides. They are long sleeve. They are a very thin material. They don't go way up my neck. They go a little bit, just a little bit lower to give me some breathing room and they're 100% polyester. These I am taking as my sun shirts. I will probably bring all three. I will probably wear one the first day and then put one on each of the subsequent days of our journey. Now, these are things that I will wear specifically on the raft. And my intention is to wear them over a swimsuit or possibly even just a swim top. I have a couple of pairs of shorts that I'm still toying with. I haven't decided if they're gonna be the greatest fit for me at the time, but I will probably wear shorts either with integrated sort of swim bottoms in them or I'll wear like a bikini bottom with shorts over them on the raft. The next thing they ask us to bring are one to two pairs of comfortable shorts. I suppose they probably anticipate that we will let them dry and maybe wear them for several days in a row. The shorts are gonna be one of the last things that I actually tackle because I had ordered some and again, I'm not sure that they are really the right fit. They're a little big, believe it or not, that I'm afraid that they may, with the weight of the water, 
being a little bit big is not a good combination. Next thing, one pair of socks. So this is for when we get to camp. Now, when you are in the desert, as many of you know, at night it gets very cool. You don't have the humidity, obviously. So the temperature swing between the daily highs and the daily lows can be dramatic. So even though it may be in the 90s during the day, it is likely to be in the 60s overnight. In fact, one of the things that Western River Expedition includes in the packing list is temperature averages. The minimum temperature on average in May is 63 degrees. So that's what we can anticipate. Of course, we're going around the turn of May to June, so it may be closer to 70. Nevertheless, I do run cold, so I am definitely going to have a pair of socks with me. These are the socks that I love to bring camping whenever I go camping. If the purpose is about just keeping my feet warm, the very best socks in the whole world are called heat holders. And they are all synthetic material. They do not breathe but they are so warm. They will retain all of the heat from your feet. They are extremely thick and they will be warm. And I may end up wearing them overnight in bed. In fact, when we go camping in our RV, I actually wear them to sleep a lot of the time when it gets chilly during the night. So heat holders, I'm taking one pair of socks. They'll be heat holders and they'll take care of me if I am at all cold at camp. They also ask us to bring one pair of quick drying pants, possibly for sun protection. I am not going to do that. They ask us to bring a lightweight fleece top. This is in case it's gonna get cold at camp. Again, especially if my hair gets wet, I will probably, even if it is 70 degrees at night, I will probably get chilly. So I am going to bring a fleece. I love this one has hair all over it as fleece tops do. It is from LL Bean, it has a little pocket, it's just a very simple zip up fleece top that I can wear around camp. It will be so comfortable, I'll be very happy to have it, no doubt. The next thing that they ask us to bring, and I love this, is comfortable footwear for camp. There are a lot of things to think about here. A lot of people will take flip-flops, and originally I did anticipate taking flip-flops with me. However, I was thinking that if it is chilly and I need to be wearing socks, I'm not gonna be wearing socks with flip-flops. That's just not gonna work for me. So I needed to find something else. So I do have a pair of Crocs that I got specifically for gardening and working in the yard, but those are so large and bulky. And as much as I love them, they're not super friendly to travel with, unless you're backpacking and you can just strap them to the outside of your backpack. I can't do that now though. So what I came up with were another pair, another type of slides. So I have these Chaco slides and these I can loosen if I need to so that my thick heat holder socks can actually fit in them. But they're slides, they're easy on, easy off. They have a thick sole, they'll protect my feet. So they have the benefits of the flip flops, but also I can wear the socks with them. So I think this is a great choice for camp. The next thing they ask us to bring is a hat. So a lot of my family will have some sort of fishing hat. I don't actually have that. But the purpose of the fishing hat is really to protect your ears and the back of your neck. It's very wide brim and floppy, and that's really nice. However, no matter what I do with my hair, save for just sticking it in a bun on the top of my head, my, I have so much hair that it's gonna protect my neck just fine. And probably if I end up getting really wet, I will let it just air dry. So it'll be this big fluffy lioness style mane that's completely out of control. But bonus with that, it is so thick and fluffy, it will definitely protect my neck and my ears from getting a sunburn. I am going to bring a visor. I love visors. Now I have several different visors that I use a lot and I have a, like a massive, an unusually massive head that we all like to make fun of a lot, but is, so it is. 
So I like the visors that actually have these Velcro straps so that I can loosen it. It never, it feels like it's squeezing my head. I just love these visors. And these are just cheap cotton visors that I got years ago and I have worn them just countless times. So I have it in black and white and then I have this sort of ropey, grassy sort of visor. I am probably just going to bring one, probably this white one, which will probably then get very dirty and I will look like a filthy fraternity boy by the time that we leave. No offense to fraternity boys, but back in my day, they wore very dirty hats. So filthy fraternity boy hat. We need gloves, gloves, very weird, right? You're like, oh, I'm not gonna be cold. I don't need gloves to keep my hands warm. No, you don't need gloves to keep your hand warm. What you need gloves for actually, and this is a surprise to me as well, but you, the type of boat that we are going on, and I guess that doesn't matter because whether you are paddling yourself or going on a motorized boat, you still have things that you're gripping all day long that are rough surfaces. But our boat is actually motorized, so we will not be doing any paddling at all, actually, I think. So we will be holding on to ropes that go across us, and they say that sometimes it can rub your hands raw when that rope ends up getting wet and your hands are wet and you are running it and gripping that rope all day long, that rough surface. So we got these like fishing gloves, fingerless gloves, I'm sure it's going to give a really unique tan on my wrist, but we have these because I would rather not have a whole bunch of blisters that I am trying to tend to during this epic trip. Next, they ask for personal hygiene products. And now that of course will vary so much based on your own needs, but things that I have identified so far that I'm going to bring, of course, toothbrush, toothpaste, here it is, here's my toothpaste. I'm gonna bring deodorant. And then they give us some extra tips on the personal items. So they do ask us to bring sunscreen and lip balm. And so I haven't figured out if we're gonna be checking a bag or not on our way out to Vegas, which is the jumping off point for this trip. So I wanted to make sure that if we did not check a bag, I wouldn't have any problems. So I ended up purchasing this Sensitive Skin Mineral Sunscreen. This one says it's for the face, but it's water resistant, lightweight. That's fine. It's SPF 50 and I bought one basically for each person in my family. It's only three ounces so we can take it on the plane. I really don't like checking luggage, so hopefully we won't have to do that. But this does actually feel like it is a lot of sunscreen and we each have one, so we should be good for the weekend. The other thing is sometimes reapplying sunscreen can feel really gross to me. Honestly, I really like the spray all over sunscreen, but that's pretty frowned upon, I guess, because of environmental reasons. And I don't know if I can actually fly with that. So I did get a face sunscreen that is a spray. So this is an SPF 30 spray. However, this is in a larger container. It's actually four ounces. So I don't think I can get this on the plane. So then I pulled out one of these handy dandy little bottles. So I think this is more like three or 3.7 ounces, whatever it is. It's a heck of a lot less than the actual bottle that the facial SPF came in. So I may decant this into this and keep this handy on the boat and then just go up to everybody and just spray their faces. My kids will not enjoy that, but they will not let me rub down their faces, I'm pretty sure, with a sunscreen. So occasionally I'm just gonna go up and spray them like a sneak attack. The other thing they talk about is actually SPF for your lips. And that's something that I'm pretty bad about. I really haven't found a lip treatment with SPF that, that I actually don't even react to. So I really struggle with that. However, I have prioritized SPF over the issues that it causes to my lips. It like causes a quick, like a deep peel when I use a lot of petroleum-based products. But this one is a Neutrogena Moisture Shine Lip Soother with SPF 20. 
So it's also supposed to be cooling. So I don't know, I've never used this. I'm gonna try it. Hopefully it'll at least feel good at the time of application. The other thing that they ask us to bring, ah, oh, biodegradable soap. Yes, I did buy that. So a lot of you will have seen this before, especially if you camp. It is sold a lot of different places, I think REI and stuff. This is Camp Suds, and you can wash pretty much anything with it, hands, face, hair, clothing, dishes, anything. I imagine that it's pretty similar to the Mr. Bronner's, to tell you the truth, but I don't think I have any of that right now. I got about three of these. I don't think that we'll even go through one, but I want us to be prepared. So I'll probably hang on to one and then my husband probably and the kids will just siphon off of us. Another thing that they invite us to bring is a water bottle. And the other thing, this is a wild card. I had to order these. They asked us to bring carabiners, two large carabiners. And the purpose of that, we have two carabiners, yeah. The purpose of that is to help connect your water bottle to the actual rope. And the other one is to connect, I think you're like day, there's supposed to be some sort of small day bag sort of situation that you'll connect to the rope of your raft. So I found my water bottle and I'm gonna stick this carabiner on it. This will just hang over the rope and I'll have this available for me all day long on the raft. I love that. In fact, I'm actually gonna put the other carabiner on this as well so it all stays nice and together. The next thing, the wild things on this list, Ooh, a small towel and a washcloth. Let me go find that. This is somewhere between a towel and a washcloth, but it is small, it packs down really well, and it is microfiber. So we love these backpacking style towels and washcloths. They're not that great at getting you dry, but they pack down really well and we take them wherever we go. We take them, I even take them in my hiking pack to have some sort of small washcloth in there. But we definitely even use them in our camper. I know a lot of people like to have nice big towels in their camper, but we are about efficiency here. So little tiny baby towel, check. We got it. Next one. A bandana or a buff? Do not have that. Let me go look. Found it, I got my buff. Okay, good. What is this for? I have no idea, zero, no idea. But you know what, I'm just gonna take it. They told me to, maybe there's a purpose. Then what do we need? We need tissues or moist towelettes and a headlamp. Okay, so I have these flushable cleansing cloths. I don't know about these. I don't really know that we're gonna need all that. I have that. I also have tissues like Kleenex style tissues that we probably will need. And then a couple of other things that I have that are again, little wild cards. I have these EO natural deodorant wipes. I have no idea if I will use these, but I may feel better if I do. So. I'm gonna bring a couple of those. I have off deep woods because I'm not bringing any sort of a bug spray. So I'll just bring these. I don't think that bugs should be a problem down there at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. I don't think so. I may need to do a little more research on that, but I have been told that it's not an issue. I'm also bringing these sunglass cleaning wipes or eyeglass, regular eyeglass cleaning wipes. One of the things that they tell us that people really underpack on is like the after sun care, like lotion. And we live in a pretty humid climate really, so we don't use a lot of lotion. But remember, I'm trying to keep them all under three ounces. So I just have this ultra repair cream from First Aid Beauty, I don't know. But it's just about full and it is lotion. It's supposed to be really hydrating, so we'll see if we use it. I also have this hairbrush. I don't know if we're actually gonna need the hairbrush. My hair usually is, it doesn't tangle very easily, so I don't know if I'll need it. The next one is the headlamp. The headlamp, I'm gonna have to put a note next to. I have a fantastic headlamp that I really, but I think my husband has it somewhere right now. I don't know where it is. 
Insect repellent, check. Sunglasses, I'll wear those to the airport, not a problem. However, there is something that I wanted to point out with the sunglasses, and that is they can actually get knocked off your face. Especially the people that sit in the front of these rafting boats, you will get pounded by a lot of different rapids. That's part of the fun of it, right? But it can actually take you out. I've seen people be like thrown overboard or thrown backwards in the boat. So were that to happen, I've seen it, the sunglasses come off of people's faces. So you want to make sure that you have a good strap. So I bought like a pack of these black straps for people that I'm traveling with that may not have straps right now. The other thing that I am using, however, are these chums because these actually float. So my husband is a real gear junkie, so he got me these so I can put these on my sort of sports sunglasses to make sure that I don't lose them. <laughs> the other things that they want us to bring are a camera. We are going to be bringing a GoPro, but I am not going to be doing it. My husband is going to be doing that, so he will have that in tow. I'll write a little note to remind him that He's on camera duty, a small travel pillow. So this is one of my favorite travel hacks. Looks pretty grim. Okay, but I have these pillows that have these bumps for your neck. They're my favorite. And this was an old one that I was getting rid of and I was replacing it with another one. And what I did, because in our travel trailer, there's not a whole lot of room to have a lot of pillows lining up across the top of the bed. Actually, it's a very small bed that we squeeze into there. I got one of these old ones and I cut it in half and that has worked really well when we travel in our RV. And this actually will work really well as a travel pillow. I will get a case and grab that for it, but because it is this foam, it'll pack down pretty tightly here. That it's about the size probably of the neck pillows that you can travel with on the airplane. And I'll just use this. And I do think it's coming back to me. I do think that they don't supply us with pillows to sleep on during the night. So I would like to have one of these. And we have a couple of these and these are old and ratty, but I'll just throw a pillowcase on it and it's totally fine. And if it gets more ruined, that's totally fine too. So this is great to have. Okay, next one, medication. I do need to bring some medication with me and I hope I remember that. I'm just gonna write a little note here. <laughs> then some optional items that they invite us to bring are clothes pins and a small rope for us to dry clothes. I really doubt that's gonna happen. We're not that organized. Comfortable loungewear for camp and for sleeping. Yes, priority. So when I get to packing the rest of my clothing, then I will definitely put in some good lounge pants to walk around at camp. One to two plastic or Ziploc bags for wet or sandy clothes. So we'll definitely be using those for the kids and probably my husband, but I thought that maybe I should use something more reusable at this point. So I have these bags that were made by the Aloha brand. They are out of Hawaii. I got these at Alani and they are these waterproof bags. So this one is pretty big. It's probably, I don't know, 14 inches by 11 inches or 12 inches. So I think that I will probably take this as my wet bag. It doesn't weigh very much. I think it's made of recycled plastic bottles or something like that. I don't know. So we'll get the plastic bags for everybody else, but mama's got that covered. A mile by mile river guide book. I glossed over that actually when I was looking at that the first time, but my aunt actually has done this trip before and she happened to have this guidebook and she was so kind to send it over to our house and it is pretty cool to actually flip through these guidebooks. So if I were you, I would try to get your hands on one of those if you're going on this trip. It is something that we've enjoyed looking at and we may take with us as well. Small binoculars, 
That is something that I'm not sure if I will take. I have a good pair of binoculars. I don't actually want them getting ruined and I'm not sure. We may take one pair collectively and share it as a family, but I don't know that we'll be doing that individually. Another thing that they ask us to bring are great shoes for the river. In one of my blog posts that I will link below, I talk about all the different types of shoes that people are curious about if they're good shoes to take on the river. And my top choice are Keens. Now, these are horrifically ugly on me, okay? And maybe they're ugly on a lot of people. No offense to Keens, they do their best. They're highly functional. But I have these Keens actually don't think I like the gray color on me. My daughter has some turquoise ones. They're way cuter. But I have these Keens. They have this to tighten them. These will not fall off my feet. And these are what I will be wearing on the river for sure. Another thing that they discuss and ask us to consider bringing is some sort of rain gear. The issue is if you are paddling or not paddling, you're just sitting and living your best life while somebody else paddles and there's a motor on your boat all day long, there is potential, of course, for you to get wet. And when it's 90 degrees, you really hope that you get wet, but you could also get cold there. If it becomes overcast, the water is always very cold, so there's potential to be cold. So you may want some layer of water protection. And in some situations, they do advise water suits. You can have full water suits. And that's something that my husband may or may not bring him. But I am going to err on the side of, what do we say, reality? So I don't think that I am going to get that uncomfortable being wet and hopefully all of the other things that I pack properly will quickly dry. But I do wanna have some sort of rain protection, especially a year like 2023 when the rains have been so heavy. So I have two things I'm going between here. I have this really thin and it wraps up into a little ball. So it is very wrinkled as well. This super thin little layer from REI. I thought this was a really great thing that they made. Anyway, this is all nylon. It's a very thin layer and I normally keep it in my hiking backpack. It's good for a light mist or something and just as a sort of an emergency, something to have with you. If I end up needing to save space, I will likely use this instead of my alternative. My alternative layer is this Patagonia torrent shell. It's a full rain jacket. It is a triple layer. We're going to hike the West Highland Way in September. So my husband insisted that we have top quality rain protection because it absolutely will be freezing and raining on our trip. So I don't know if I'm gonna do the heavy, like all weather style rain jacket or if I'm gonna stick to just a light layer, but one of those for sure I will be using. The other thing they talk about is no jewelry. I don't wear like heavy jewelry, but there is jewelry that I wear every day and just never take off. So at least, I will take off my rings, my college ring, and I will take off my wedding ring, and I will wear one of these little plastic, they're silicone, I'm sure you've seen them. They're little silicone rings that fit right on your finger. And I guess if your finger gets slammed, these can just be cut off with some scissors or something like that. So there you go, I'll just wear that on the trip. So I have a package of those. In terms of my necklace, I guess maybe I'll take off my necklace. And then my earrings, maybe I'll wear studs. I don't know, I never go without earrings, that's weird. I have some protection for the cell phone. A lot of people will still have their cell phones in their day bags on the river. So I got a package, I actually got a two pack of these little cell phone protectors for when you are near or in water. They say that they're waterproof. I don't tend to totally trust that, so I'm still gonna be extra careful, but this will be a great layer to have to help protect the cell phone. The other thing that I have that was so crazy, but this goes back to the warmth thing, is 
in the morning it can still be pretty cool there could be a cool breeze in the morning if it's overcast it'll take even longer to warm up but remember you're between these canyon walls so there's probably not a huge chunk of the day when you're enjoying the sunshine because you're getting shade so tightly from both sides so they suggested that we get some nylon socks like waterproof socks so as horrifically hideous as these are and as much as I hate to spend money on these sort of things that I may only wear whatever times that I happen to go whitewater rafting I don't want my feet to be cold I get very cold I don't want them to be cold and be really uncomfortable and grumpy for the first couple hours of the day so I did get people that tend to run cold in my family some of these nylon socks we'll see if I ever use them Another thing is my mom was actually pretty concerned about getting cold because she runs cold as well. So what we decided was to bring a pack of these hot hands. You just open the package and you shake them up and then you can stick them in your socks or sometimes if I'm hiking and my hands are really cold, I'll put them in my jacket pockets and then I'll just hold my hands in there and they'll get them nice and warm. So these are like the insurance backup plan. The other thing that they don't talk about is an emergency kit, like the first aid kit. I'm sure that they have one, so they don't really want everybody to worry about bringing their own. However, there are some things that I will want to have with me in case of emergency. I definitely have the mole skin and I have that already cut up into strips so i'll be taking this in case anybody's keens wear on their feet in an uncomfortable way it is absolutely a possibility unfortunately another thing that i will have with me are these sting away wipes if anything happens to a kid we need a quick solution to take away the pain or me who am i kidding other than that, I'm going to ensure that I have a motion sickness medication for sure and possibly some level of Benadryl. So I'll have to spend some more time going through this and making sure that I have what I need. We will be taking a flight from Las Vegas out to meet the helicopter and then a helicopter down to the inside of the canyon. There's probably some sort of a bus or van ride somewhere in between. I don't do well with that, neither does my daughter. So well, we may need to try out some motion sickness patches or something on the way just to make sure. The idea is not that we wanna prevent all suffering because we're too weak to suffer. But the idea is we do want to make this as pleasant as possible, especially when it's a multi-generational trip. We have a lot of different family members there that are invested in creating special memories. So whereas some of these things might look and feel a little bit high maintenance and they might not be things that I get real worked up about in other scenarios, I want to do everything that I can during this trip to keep from being in a bad mood, being upset, being uncomfortable. And I wanna have things to offer the people around me to also ensure that they are as comfortable as possible during this journey and everybody can enjoy it and build the memories that we are looking so very much forward to. So I will give you an update when we come back about what I used and what I didn't use. I have my different packing cubes out where I will be putting my underwear and my bathing suits, extra shirts and extra pants, and I guess my swim shorts. However, I still have to pack for the night before the trip and then the night after the trip when we will also be staying in Las Vegas. So it might get a little bit intermixed there. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe, especially if you wanna hear how it went, if you wanna see footage, and if you wanna see a review on the things that I packed and any updates that might be helpful for you when you hopefully will get to the Grand Canyon to enjoy your own river rafting trip, if you haven't already. And those of you that have, you're probably rolling your eyes, but that's okay. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be my first trip and I'll roll my eyes with you when I get back. Y'all take care.
Bye-bye.